Namaste, and welcome to the Buddhism Guide podcast by Yeshi Rabge. If you'd like more of my podcasts, blogs, videos, or guided meditation practices, visit my website, yeshirabge.com. And if you'd like to support my work, go to patreon.com forward slash Buddhism Guide. I hope you enjoy this episode. This episode is called the Mangala Sutra, Part 7. All of our actions of body and speech stem from our mind, so it's vitally important to have a strategy whereby we can have some control over our thoughts and feelings and emotions. Mindfulness and carrying out a day of observance are two good ways to practice self-restraint. I'm not saying by using mindfulness and having a day of observance we have to try and control or suppress our actions of body and speech, but just to get in tune with them. Many people believe mindfulness can only be achieved on the meditation cushion, but this is not correct. Although we do mindfulness meditation practices, we must take the insights we gain from that and introduce them into our daily lives. If we are extremely mindful on our cushion, but when we go outside we are driven by thoughts of the past or the future, then what is the point of the mindfulness practice? We have to remain focused on the task at hand and not let our minds wander off to the future or float back to the past. Of course, it's natural to have a wandering mind, but we need to learn skills to keep it in check. When we're walking, we should be fully aware that we're walking when we're eating, sitting, washing, talking, listening and so on, we should be fully in tune with what we're doing, what our thoughts and emotions are and what is happening around us. This way of being will enable us to watch our thoughts, feelings and emotions as they arise so we can weed out the unhelpful ones and allow the helpful ones to materialise in actions of body and speech. So often, we just do and say things out of habit. Even though they've not served us well in the past, we still do them. We're trapped in our comfort zone. So what we need to do is become aware of our thoughts before they turn into actions. If you're not convinced that your thoughts control your feelings, emotions and actions... Just try feeling unhappy without having unhappy or negative thoughts. It can't be done. This is the same for happiness, anger, sadness, pride, jealousy or any other emotion. To experience any feeling or emotion, you have to first have the thought that produces it. The same goes for any action. First we think we are going to walk, and then we walk. It's the same for our speech. We don't just tell a lie. We have the thought that we're going to lie, and then we lie. This is how important our thoughts are. Some people say, oh, sorry, that just came out. But it wouldn't have if they'd been more mindful. If we check to see what we're about to do or say and see if it's going to be helpful or harmful, we'll be able to restrain from the harmful and concentrate on the helpful. You can also look at your actions during your reflection practice and see what worked and what didn't and next time you're in the same situation where something didn't work out, remain mindful and act in a more helpful way. Another very good way to train ourselves in self-restraint and being able to stay focused is to have a day of observance. This is when you make a promise to yourself 
to observe the eight precepts. You can observe them for one day, a week, a month, a year, or for the rest of your life. However, most people would do them for a day because they've got family or work commitments. It's possible to do them for a longer period if you attend an organised retreat. A lot of people will wait for a certain day or date to have a day of observance, but I believe it is not necessarily to wait for a special day, such as a new moon or full moon day. A good day to choose is when you're not working, so you can concentrate on doing practice, reading books or listening to spiritual teachings. I would suggest you try to do a day of observance once a week, but at the very least once a month. The eight precepts are refrain from killing, refrain from stealing, refrain from wrong speech, refrain from sexual misconduct, refrain from intoxicants and illegal drugs, refrain from eating at the wrong time, refrain from any type of entertainment and from beautifying yourself. And finally, refrain from sleeping on a luxurious bed. On the day of observance, you should rise at dawn and make a commitment to adhere to the eight precepts until dawn the next day. You do not have to make this promise to a god or your teacher or anyone else. Just make it to yourself because it's you who's going to benefit and it's also you who will be cheated if you do not carry out the day of observance. Precept 1 is refrain from killing and so it's good not to eat any meat and dairy on this day and to remain conscious of not killing any small insects. Try to stay indoors as much as possible because whenever we go outside we're liable to inadvertently step on insects. Precept 2 is refrain from stealing, so do not take what has not been given. Part 3 is to refrain from wrong speech, and if you come into contact with others on this day, be sure you think before you speak. Don't say anything until you've checked to see if it's true, helpful and kind. I believe it's much better to take a vow of silence on this day. It has two benefits. You don't have to worry about wrong speech. And more importantly, you remain totally focused as there is just you and your thoughts. And that is a very powerful combination. Precept four is refrain from sexual misconduct. So do not engage in any sexual activities on this day. That means no sex between dawn one day and dawn the next. This is not saying that sex is a bad thing, only that it's a distraction and something we get attached to. So it is better to refrain from it for one day. Precept 5 is refrain from intoxicants and illegal drugs. And we should not take any intoxicants on this day. But of course, medical drugs are permitted. Precept 6 concerns not eating at the wrong time. And so we should not eat and drink after noon on the day of the observance. It's advisable to eat and drink around 11.30 in the morning and then not eat or drink anything after that until dawn the next day. I'd suggest you take water periodically throughout the day, but refrain from drinking anything else. This again is not a form of punishment or penance. It's to help you remain focused on your practice, especially meditation practice. When we've eaten a meal, it makes us feel heavy and sluggish, and both of these are not helpful for our meditation as they make us feel sleepy. I would advise you not to eat twice as much at 11.30, hoping that it will see you through till dawn, as this doesn't work, and I know, because I've tried it. 
It will only make you feel bloated and uncomfortable. Remember, if you lose your self-restraint and take a bite to eat or have a drink between noon and dawn, don't be hard on yourself. Just retake the precept and focus your attention back on the practice. Precept 7 is divided into two parts, refraining from entertainment and beautifying oneself. The first part is aimed at keeping your mind, body and speech away from all kinds of entertainment. Not, of course, that they're sinful, but that they disturb our mind and excite our senses. And this covers television, radio, cinema, sporting events, Netflix and even the internet. And I would further suggest you turn off your phone from dawn until dawn the next day. I know some of you will be horrified by that thought, but don't worry, the world won't end. The second part covers not wearing makeup, jewellery or perfumes. This is to stop any form of vanity and conceitedness from arising. It also takes you back to basics. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like or if your clothes are nicely ironed. What matters is that you stay focused on your practice and train yourself in self-restraint. Precept 8 covers not sleeping on a luxurious bed. Throughout the day, you've cut out of the luxuries, so the luxury of a large, soft bed should also be dispensed with. You could put a mattress on the floor or sleep on your own in the spare room. Again, This is not for punishment, but to help build your self-restraint. I've heard of people going to bed at six in the evening because they were hungry and couldn't watch the telly. So they thought they would sleep and when they wake up, they can eat and uh, get back to their normal way of life. I think this is kind of missing the point. Use your free time to study. Reflect and do your practice. So these are the eight precepts to follow during your day of observance. They're meant to build your mental and bodily discipline and are not a penance. If you fall short on any of these precepts during the day, don't beat yourself up. Just retake the precept and move on. Setting up a day of observance takes planning. You have to be sure that your family and friends know what you're doing so they don't disturb you. The first time may be a bit hit and miss, but don't give up. The rewards are worth it and in the end it will help build your self-restraint and make your life much simpler. In the Dharmapada, verse 234, it states this, The wise who restrain their body who restrain their tongue, the wise who restrain their mind, are indeed well restrained. This podcast is based on my book, Life's Meandering Path, and it's available now from Amazon and Kindle. This is the end of this episode, but if you'd like to listen to more of my podcasts, go to my website, yeshirabge.com. So thank you so much for listening. And remember, the only person we can ever really know is ourselves. Bye for now.